Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's very exciting, and uh, we will have more and more uh, in the next couple of years. Um, as Moji shared our story about uh, Semvita journey, um, I want to actually go a little bit further and share our story from our hometown in Iran and uh, our story, how we grew up, and how a lot of our current um, projects and ideas formed, and we decided to uh, start the company. Um, we are Persian, as you know, and we are from a city called Shiraz. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a historical city, cultural city in Iran, and um, there are a lot of beautiful gardens and historical buildings in the, in the city, and uh, I think everybody knows um, Shiraz wine. Um, the name of brand originally came from um, the, the Shiraz wine produced in Shiraz, and then later, I think, uh, a group of people took it into Australia and then uh, commercialized it. Um, and um, Shiraz wine is a big part of the culture um, and uh, because it's a symbol of love. Um, and it's because at the, as it ages, it gets better. So it's a big part of the culture, and you see um, Shiraz wine in different forms in, in literature. Uh, another part of the, the Persian culture is the connection um, with nature. Um, and again, you can see it in different forms of art uh, in, in Persian culture. So even uh, Mother Nature has a, a specific character in Persian culture. Uh, you can see her in several forms. Uh, in a lot of uh, paintings, uh, uh, classical paintings, uh, she is at the middle of nature, have connection with all creatures, and she's playing uh, music, which is a symbol of harmony in nature. Uh, here you can see other versions of uh, Mother Nature connection with um, uh, with all creatures, and sometimes she's dancing, which is a, a symbol of harmony and peace and freedom. Um, also, you can see this connection with nature even in architecture. For instance, in uh, Persepolis, uh, which is the sister of Acropolis, and uh, again, it's located close to Shiraz. Um, you see this connection with nature. It's, it's a palace, but still you see all of the soldiers, they are carrying flowers which is a, a symbol of love, a symbol of peace and civilization and connection with nature and respect to nature. With all of that, you can, you can imagine growing in um, this culture. Um, I was feeling the connection with nature just by my heart. Um, but then when I grew up as a teenager, I always wanted to learn more. I wanted to understand where that harmony is coming from. Um, and I was interested to understand the scientific concept behind this harmony. So I studied natural sciences in high school, and then later, um, when I went to college, I studied double major veterinary medicine and biochemistry. And biochemistry helped me to have a closer connection with nature, because I could even see some of the mechanisms, how it's happening. Um, and then I realized all of this harmony actually is coming from nature's code, which is stored in DNA. We call it genetic code. Uh, later, I um, got very interested about the biomimicry uh, technologies where we can uh, learn from natural processes and learn from the genetic code, and then we replicate it in a synthetic form, even to enhance it or make it better. Uh, initially, I started the, the programming of cells for application in regenerative medicine and pharmaceutics. I worked with stem cells where we programmed uh, waste uh, tissues such as fat that nobody wants it, and we convert them to adipose, the, we convert them to cardiac cells and cardiac pacemaker cells. Uh, I really loved this project. When I was working in Tulane University, I worked uh, uh, in this project. And it, 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 there was, at some point, I had an aha moment because when you have cells like adipose tissues and then you convert them to cardiac 
cells. You can see even electrical um, behavior uh, of the cells. You can see them, they are beating, and it changes something in your heart. And you really believe in the, the cell programming and nature has a code. Um, and then I, I also found it very strong because today we have tools to read, write, and edit the genetic code. Uh, initially, my focus was on stem cells, so I moved to Houston for this project um, to do a preclinical study also because I, uh, I studied veterinary medicine, so my professor asked me, hey Tara, you go to Houston and do the, the clinical study in, um, in Methodist Hospital um, in animal models. And I moved to Houston and it it just helped Moji and I to connect with each other again. We were far away from each other more than 10 years. And Houston uh, helped us to reconnect again. So we were very excited after a long time being together. So we spent a lot of time um, and uh, we were just sharing a lot of ideas, a lot of random ideas, I think, at the moment. And uh, during dinner, during road trips, and, uh, but. At some point, we shared so much ideas across the two industry, from energy industry and biotech, that we decided to start a company. And then one day, Moji told me, hey, Tara, why you are not leaving your job? And then we start a company. And I said, okay, I didn't think about it. Um, and, uh, but we did it. Uh, and we thought about several ideas, and uh, we finally decided to focus on climate change. Both of us, we wanted to do, always we wanted to do um, something um, significant about climate change uh, and take an action, but we didn't know how. But at the time, when we, uh, when we decided to start a company, we mm, said, okay, that's, that's the best thing we can do in our life, to have a legacy. Let's do it now. Um, and for me, um, as a wet, always uh, animals are close to my heart. And uh, it, it melts my heart when I see, sometimes us humans mm, take some mistakes that then they suffer. They lost their habitats, they, they, and they, a lot of them actually are at the risk of extinction. Um, and then definitely there are consequences for us as well. And, the, and then I, I thought, okay, there are a lot of scientists working on cancer research, working on regenerative medicine. Um, let me take some of uh, my learnings to um, develop a technology um, and take some actions for um, climate change. So we started the company, Semvita, and you may uh, wonder what does Semvita mean. Vita means life, C-E-M, uh, stands for code, energy, and mass. Everybody are familiar with the classic relativity uh, uh, law of physics uh, through um, relativity of energy and mass, where energy and mass in nature can transform to each other. We believe um, in addition to energy and mass, there is a third dimension for nature's law and its code. The best example is information storage in molecules of DNA. And we believe by understanding of the genetic code, we can produce sustainable materials using renewable energies. And that's the core of our technology and the core of everything we do. How we do it, how we convert, uh, converted uh, a scientific concept to the technology, uh, we learn from nature, we define a specific genetic codes for a specific materials, and then we use uh, synthetic biology tools. We engineered our beneficial microbes to convert uh, carbon dioxide and renewable energies to um, valuable materials. And today, um, uh, our team members uh, in different sessions, they will discuss uh, uh, how, how we do it uh, in, in 
um, in our platform uh, for production of different types of chemicals and renewable fuels. And uh, we believe in future with the um, with all supports from our partners, strategic investors, uh, to take our technology to the next level, scale it up, and uh, make products um, that are good for us and good for our planet. Thank you so much.